right? Well, when the Space Needle here in Seattle was built in 1962, back at the dawn of the space age, lots of people thought they would soon be taking trips just like that. Of course, it hasn't quite worked out that way. It cost about a half a billion dollars just to take the space shuttle out for a spin. Kind of an expensive vacation, isn't it? One, please. Thank you. But what if there was another way to get to space? And what if that way were as easy and as cheap as riding an elevator? Well, strange as it sounds, some people think this kind of trip might just be possible one day, thanks to something known as the space elevator. A 22,000 mile long cable that we could ride straight to outer space. What we're talking about is, is building the biggest thing ever. And what enables this big idea is the discovery of something so small you can't even see it with the naked eye, a new material called a carbon nanotube. Fueled by the promise of these tiny tubes, people are already working to turn the space elevator into a reality. It's basically a fairly straightforward system once you get down to the nuts and bolts of it. First, launch a satellite to geosynchronous orbit, 22,000 miles above Earth. Then, lower a cable or ribbon and attach it to a platform at sea. Clamped to the ribbon, elevator cars or climbers could carry people and payloads up and down. Lasers on the ground would beam energy wirelessly to solar cells on the underside of the climber, powering electric motors for the 22,000 mile journey. Okay, I know what you must be thinking. A 22,000 mile elevator ride? These people are nuts. Like, what would even hold it up? Well, the idea is not quite as crazy as it sounds. Imagine uh, I have a yo-yo in my hand. As you spin the yo-yo around, the body of the yo-yo is thrust outward, and the string connecting you to the yo-yo is held taut. Well, this is the same principle that would keep the space elevator up. We're basically uh, making a planet-sized yo-yo. A space elevator could be safer and cheaper than rockets, giving routine access to the solar system. Bringing this far-out idea down to Earth, NASA recently funded a competition in New Mexico to build and race space elevator prototypes. It was held at the XPRIZE Cup, a carnival of cutting-edge space technology. In the tradition of competitions that stretch farther back than Charles Lindbergh's transatlantic flight, the aim is to inspire new advances in technology. Wow! This year, Teams of students and weekend inventors are vying for the $150,000 in prizes in the space elevator contest. I heard about this competition and I thought, wow, you don't have to have a billion dollars in an aerospace company to do this. I mean, we're definitely in the cutting edge. You're going to see stuff go wrong today. The racetrack is a 50-meter ribbon suspended from a crane. Teams had to design and build climbers, then race them to the top of the ribbon. In place of the laser that might otherwise power a real space elevator, they could use only energy from the sun or beam from the ground. The best time wins, as long as you go faster than a meter per second. One of the first to try their luck is a high school team from Germany with an elevator sporting an intimidating solar panel and name. Turbo crawler. Turbo crawler. Yeah. All right, that sounds mean. It sounds, sounds like it's going to win. Yeah, so. <laughs> But as Turbo Crawler is about to take off, the wind picks up. Turbo Crawler gets out of hand, and the Germans are grounded, at least for the time being. Julie Belrose and her team from the University of Michigan are next to jump on the ribbon. The whole big idea behind doing this is to get engineers in school to start working on this. At the end of this event, there are kids here who are going to know more about space elevator technology than NASA scientists are. Julie's climber is powered by a dozen spotlights that each have to track the solar panels all the way up the ribbon. The climber gets off to a good start. But the higher it rises, the harder it becomes to hit the solar panels with the spotlights to keep it going. After about six minutes of stopping and starting, the climber reaches the top. Well, we didn't make it in the time required, but one of the goals is to make it to the top, so we're very happy. NASA's prize money is safe, at least until the contest resumes the next day. 
Now, if you think the whole idea of an elevator to space sounds like science fiction, you're right. It was popularized in the late 1970s in a sci-fi novel called The Fountains of Paradise by Arthur C. Clarke. At last, we can build the space elevator, and then we will have a stairway to heaven, a bridge to the stars. But as long as people have dreamed of building that bridge to the stars, no material existed to make a cable that's strong enough.